Welcome to all, and thank you for joining Brian Massal's continuing series of revenue recognition webinars. This is our fifth webinar of 2017, and today we will address several, several features of SAP's latest version of revenue accounting and reporting, version 1.3, with a focus on key improvements for project systems integration. I am Dave Fellers, the CEO of Bramsaw, and I will be your host and moderator for today's webinar. I am also joined by Chris Ritterhern, our Director of Solutions, and Hans Christian Metz, our Senior RAR Consultant and a member of our Center of Expertise, and finally, Jacek Dudkowski, a Senior RAR Consultant and also a core member of our COE. Our team is just returning from a fantastic week at SAP Sapphire, where we had the opportunity to speak with many of you including customers, those still evaluating what to do with revenue recognition, as well as business partners. We found that businesses are in various stages of their revenue recognition projects. Many have barely begun, but time is getting short. Brownsell is aware of your challenges, so we are constantly de developing and improving the tools, processes, accelerators, and methodology to help you focus on the key elements of compliance so that you can have a working solution to meet the regulation including enhancements for disclosure reporting, uh, disclosure reporting and contract migrations into the new tools so that you can produce audit-ready financial statements. So with that, uh, moving along, today after our introductions and housekeeping, again, Hans, Jacek, and Chris will present project systems integration. Uh, we'll provide some key points around the, the tool and some additional considerations and then we will uh, have a wrap-up and uh, address some of the questions. Uh, for our housekeeping today, on the next slide, um, before we get started with our formal presentation, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. The session is being recorded. Uh, everyone but the presenters will be on mute. You can ask questions throughout the session by typing them into the question area of your screen as shown there in the right, right corner. We will uh, address them live, either by responding in text form, uh, we may be able to address some towards the end of the call, and any that uh, we don't get to, we'll follow up with after the session. Let's use social media. I encourage you to tweet to hashtag RevRecReady, no spaces, with comments or thoughts throughout the presentation. And if you would, if you would like a download uh, copy of the webinar, or any of our well over a dozen other webinars on RevRec topics, you can do so by visiting our website. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll find the resource section uh, where you can uh, submit a request. So moving on to our presenters for today. Uh, as I mentioned, I am the CEO of Ramsall, and I'm uh, honored to step in uh, this time around. Uh, also, we have Chris Ritterhern. Uh, he is our uh, lead for solution engineering. Uh, Chris has over 25 years of experience and is a leading expert on the SAP RAR uh, module and program. He has delivered over 100 RAR demos to dozens of clients and prospects over the last couple of years and is sought after for his practical knowledge and insights in how SAP can work for companies just like yours. In fact, he delivered several sessions on this very topic at SAP Sapphire just last week. Hans Christian Metz is also a frequent guest of our webinars and has the distinction of having helped deliver uh, one of the first and, and is involved in now a couple other of our uh, SAP RAR go lives and has works in a number of key projects as a key and core member of uh, Bramasol's Center of Expertise with his focus on revenue accounting and finance. And today we have Jacek Kowski joining. He's also a part of Bramasol's COE team specializing in all the aspects of SAP's project system and lately focusing on the project accounting integration into RIR. He's lead with our clients currently implementing PS integration to RIR. Uh, Jacek has been engaged in various aspects of SAP for the past 15 plus years and as a thought leader in this area. So a little overview on Bramsaw. Uh, and many of you have, have been with us many times, but we continue to be a uh, top leader for uh, revenue recognition. We are definitely SAP's go-to partner. Um, we have continued to create um, the processes necessary to help implement and go live with RAR. Uh, and we are being increasingly recognized by more and more of our customers. We can get you started right away as we're able to put RAR into a cloud-like environment so that you can begin getting your hands on it, prototyping, testing, uh, while uh, working out 
uh, back, any back end issues you have uh, to get RIR up and running. Um, and we do have the deepest and most experienced and expert resources uh, in the industry, and our clients have noted that and are thankful for that. Uh, also, process and tool area is constantly evolving as we continue to look and enhance um, the functionality of RIR. Uh, I mentioned disclosure reporting a moment ago. We've added uh, a number of disclosure reports as a part of our offering. There are 127 different disclosures, and we've identified the highest priority ones to help you meet the minimum requirements uh, as time continues to move by. Uh, we also uh, continue to refine our methodology, our testing, our data gathering, our contract evaluation and conversion processes to help you get through the key elements uh, to be successful in complying with revenue recognition. I now would like to turn over to Chris Ritterhern to present to you today's um, presentation. Oh, thank you, Dave. I really appreciate that, that introduction, by the way. And um, today, we're going to be uh, going through, and I'll just wait for my uh, slide to come up here. Today, we'll be covering an overview of the project systems integration with RER. We'll be looking at the specific aspects of revenue accounting to support that. We'll be discussing, uh, for those of you that are, are very deep into project systems, the uh, integration with results analysis, and also uh, talk about some of your options. Um, that you have within this uh, frame set. So, why do we care? Well, revenue recognition is a primary source of financial restatements due to application errors and fraud. Hence, FASB's clear attempt to clean this up and really normalize this among all the uh, companies out there and how companies report, uh, whether they burpee it public or private, uh, when things go on. Interesting enough, this is something that's definitely required. We don't want to scare you or anything like that, but everybody out there is aware that this is a mandatory regulation and that all companies, whether, again, public or private, need to apply. Um, Hans, uh, you're out there dealing with a lot of customers and their uh, analysis of this after various accounting assessments. What's your impression of, of how companies are receiving this and, and looking at uh, being compliant with this new set of regulations? Well, um, so first off, I think that uh, obviously the slide is a little bit like um, put the Jesus, the scare of the Jesus in you, right? Um, so the, the question, generally speaking, first, if we if we really go in by by the question of what it does for for uh, financial reporting, external reporting, and so on, um, it's obvious that one of the the main ideas about the the, uh, the guidelines is to reduce uh, the the judgment or at least uh, reduce the the ease with which you could manipulate calculations, right, and uh, make them work better for whatever you wanted to report as revenue. So that's definitely there. I mean, I think the question if, if it really reduces fraud, yes, it does, because RER is automation, RER is SAP, so everything is auditable. Um, fine. We have actually, I mean, maybe as a practical aspect of that, uh, we have actually had discussions with customers that really um, came to us uh, um, basically asking, well, can I do this for, like this for that that uh, uh, contract? And for that contract, maybe I can recognize it completely differently, although it's actually looking exactly the same in the system. And uh, SAP obviously doesn't lend itself to that. So you also lose flexibility, but um, that is um, actually the intention of the guidelines, right? So um, that's maybe a little bit of a, of a kind of like background to what we're stating here. Um, there will be issues if you're not uh, going live on time, if you have stated you're going to do something and you cannot implement it. So there will be restatements, there will be possibly um, issues with the with the statements you have made in the 10Q and so on. And well, that's why there's a lot of pressure on us and uh, to implement on time and uh, where there's, uh, well, there's, there's a lot of commotion going on around it. Back to you. Thank you, Hans, really appreciate, really appreciate that. So uh, for those that are aware of it, uh, it is a five-step process. Uh, SAP has written a module, uh, which most of you are aware of at this point, the Revenue Accounting and Reporting. It is an add-on to your existing ECC system. And also uh, for S4 HANA folks, it is uh, completely compatible in that environment. Um, through the first four steps and, and foundations and master data, just by getting it set up in RER, you're compliant there, and then it is execution of the fifth step that the software really comes into play and integrating it back in and compliance to your general ledger and how it meets uh, the regulations, both IFRS and uh, uh, FASB ASC regulations. So um, really what's happening out there is the principle is 
recognize revenue only when goods or services are transferred to the customer. That's very important and what is on the changing from the perspective. And also, in the principle, identify the separate and distinct performance obligations, which I know many of you are aware of, and account for those goods and impressions. Um, Yasik, briefly, what's your impression about this impact really from a project perspective? Have you got some thoughts or experiences? Yeah, now you have experiences. Some thoughts about that, what you're saying? In terms of, I'm sorry, Chris, in terms of projects as an implementation project or projects as in the module project systems, I'm sorry. Pro project systems. Well, the, implement, <coughs> the impact is obviously for um, a lot of folks who are using controlling, and as you know previously, the two main areas of revenue recognition were in results analysis and uh, the SD module for SD revenue recognition. Um, the impact is here that this combines it and allows you to do um, through compliance for your, your large project, mostly in construction, make to order, which is the large segment of folks who are using project systems and CL, uh, to the new guidance. Uh, so as we're talking about the, the functionality integration, um, from an SAP perspective, if you think about it, it's really a convergence of all of these methods of revenue recognition into one stream under the RER tool. Thanks, Alex. I really appreciate that. So let's talk about what we see out there in terms of how it operates today. Today, the percentage of completion and fulfillment in ECC operates something like this. You have your project with your WBS structures, and you run results analysis and, and do the, the further steps in there. The next is in the second period, you have your results analysis key set up, and you look at the percentage of completion that you've got. And then from there, we look at invoicing and billing and how we're handling the settlements, the settlement process, and that goes to defer to run bill depending on how we set up our accounts. We're also updating profitability analysis if we're looking at that and looking at the, the cost and revenue from that perspective. Um, this is all happening directly to the general ledger from project systems. So now we'll talk about what happens when you insinuate RIR in the mix and helps you meet compliance based on this percentage of completion, which project systems are very much focused on. So most key in this, by the way, is that SAP chose to integrate through the results analysis key. So we'll explain to you more about that in a moment, but just wanted to point out to you, and also for everybody out there, we put in slides in here that later when you download it, you can look at it and, and see exactly some more details. We didn't intend to get into configuration and gory detail, but just give you a sense of, of what's going on from that perspective. Yasik, um, the way SAP has chose to integrate this results analysis key, would you agree that this simplifies the way that they have project integration and maybe touch on a couple of the, the concepts that people are dealing with and looking at this? Well, SAP has really chosen only to develop two inter main integration methods for uh, CO and RER. And that is one based on percent of completion, whether that is a cost-to-cost -cost basis or a quantity basis, percent of completion calculation. And another is a revenue calculation method. Um, in both cases, uh, those are the mainstream use cases really for, for this and integration, but there, was some, there are some subtle differences in terms of the way that's configured and the way the, uh, the systems are running in sequence, especially towards your month end. Uh, the main, main key, which I believe you will see in a slide in a few minutes or a few seconds, is that um, for folks who are very much used to running results analysis, uh, the revenues are no longer posted to FI from results analysis, but other for the new RER tool. However, the integration still holds true and the percent of completion is either passed to be applicable within um, the revenue tool, the revenue accounting tool, or in method two, which is the revenue-based valuation method, um, the revenues calculated by RER tool are applicable to calculations within results analysis. Um, again, uh, the Modifications are minor on the results analysis keys, uh, but those are the two methods that you should be looking at for the integration. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate that that insight there. So the folks have out there what, what really integration point is, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Right now we're going to explore a little bit the RER module itself so you understand it. Um, RER has really three basic parts to it, an integration layer, a rules engine, and then a, basically a trial posting area. Again, it's an add-on. And SAP has designed it so that it can take feeds not only from project systems results analysis via a sales order technique, but from uh, CRM systems and external systems. So you have that capability here. And to give you a little more detail about what's going on in there, 
Um, at the very top, if we as our operational process stream, whether that's ECC directly or external, you would feed that into RER. And eventually you'll run a new posting function called RER posting, and that is the update back into the general ledger in compliance with the regulations. So uh, this is kind of the big picture. Again, some of these slides we've put, through, put in here for your reference as you look later. Uh, we really want to focus on um, the project systems folks. So I'm going to skip through some of the, the 101 stuff for those of us who, for those of you who've been on some of our other webinars, you've seen these before. Uh, but really what we're focused on today of the three type performance obligation types that are implemented in RIR, we're on the percentage of completion. So we'll be looking specifically at that. But we'll look at the blend of when you bring in event-based uh, from a project system perspective especially because we're, we're seeing many cases where projects include customer material and uh, folks have been struggling out there or looking for various ways or come up with various ways manually or by doing it themselves different channels where they deliver materials charge the customer for that so it is a revenue stream but they're still doing the project and, and maybe it might be an NRE type of a charge or it could be about those materials so uh, this is something that RER helps you to easily blend and meet compliance with the regulations, uh, something that we do on there. So we put together this flow diagram to sort of give you the big picture of integration to project systems. This is all ECC here. There's not separate software. So there's not a separate server or anything like that. So at the very top, I have my project system. I create my project as normal, everything I do. I link it to WBS through a sales order. That sales order, it is transferred to RER because you've marked it as RER relevant. So part of the configuration is the sales document type and item configuration. That's how it gets into RR. So not all sales orders run down that road. And then a couple of things I need to have in advance for everything to fly correctly is I need to make sure I use plan costs. And then project costs are your normal charging to the WBS. So as you see, there's a cycle there. And then when finally I run results analysis with that new key, RER looks to update any related RER contract because of the results analysis. Now, if you notice, I have on the same line going across to the right SD invoicing. So understand that your invoicing and billing still occurs pretty much as you're going to do it today. There's really no change. What RER is managing for you is the recognition of the revenue based on percentage of completion. And we'll look at an example of it. Finally, you'll have settlement, in which case from a revenue perspective, it marks the sales as the project WBS is 100%. So with any revenue remaining that wasn't accounted for based on results analysis, into um, the revenue stream. So this is a simple example that we're going to show today. Uh, one of the things that we like about RIR is that we use these paper models. We have a variety of these. Uh, this shows you the multi-element aspects of RIR and how it operates from that perspective. So this is one of the ones that we're going to be taking a look at today. Um, and because some of you have seen our project systems demo, we're going to show you just a slightly different flavor of this so that you can get a sense of how our RIR operates. So, uh, with that, let's take a look at what's happening from an RER perspective. So here I am, and I'm in my uh, SAP system, which you'll see in just a moment as I show it up on our screen here. There we go. So uh, somebody, everybody knows this one here. Let's look at our, our components of it. We'll go to our project builder here, and we're looking at this particular project here. And what's interesting is this project has two milestones. If you look here at the top left, in fact, I'm going to uh, narrow this up just a little bit so that we don't catch that left edge for folks that might not have a full screen mode in there. There we go. Okay, so you see here I've got two WBS structures in this project here, and each one has milestones underneath it, and I'll expand this out here so you can see it. So I'm going to have two different streams that are potentially charged. So when I look at the WBS and I go to control structure, you can see here's where the results analysis key that we were talking about earlier, and this is the one that we adjusted to account for the integration. So the next step now is let's look at the, the sales order behind this particular one here. So as I look at this, let's go back to my SAP system and let's look at the contract that's underneath this. And so it's just a SAP standard sales order. And what's interesting about this uh, particular one here, let's go back to the correct sales order. There you go. What's interesting about this particular one here is something that we've also heard is that this represents an opportunity to easily have the sales order as an umbrella revenue collection vehicle for all the WBS is related to either this project or multiple projects. So here I've got two WBSs in here, and then I've also got customer materials that I'll be charging for and delivering as a result of potentially what I'm doing out there, perhaps engineering, perhaps installation. The linkage, by the way, if I drill into this particular item, if I go over here to account assignment, I'll see the linkage is really, there's my, my WBS structure, and that's my linkage there. 
So that's how I build the link. That in turn brings in the milestone billing plan related to that, and this breaks out however I choose to charge the revenue streams here. And you can see I've actually invoiced for 50000 So let's take a look here. Again, I'm moving along at a fairly rapid clip here just so folks uh, can see this, and, and we also understand that everybody's got certain amounts of time. So let's look at the RAR contract. So now we're in my RAR system. RAR is delivered via two types of user interfaces. Uh, let me just expand this just a little bit so it's easier to see on the screen there. So we're going to take a look at that particular operational document sales order. And if you notice, both accounting principles were created, both the IFRS and the US GAAP. Today we're going to look at the US GAAP version of it. So this is the RAR contract that's been created. It's delivered by the, the web U, uh, UI. Uh, also for the SAP Business Client users, that's the other user interface out there. And you can see here that the allocation effect is already taken up, uh, already in, in place here because based on the percentage, there's a, a carve-in and carve-out of revenue from the various elements within the single contract bundled. Think about this as a bundle. And let's take a look at the revenue stream. Now, I'm, instead of looking at the entire revenue stream, we're just going to focus on one performance obligation so that way we can clearly see the end results of my results analysis run. So here we are, and about 6.5% green means posted, so I've done some posting here. Um, there's been an invoice for 50,000. However, based on my percentage of completion, I'm only able to recognize 15,234 of this particular performance obligation. So let's go in here and let's inject some costs. Uh, whoops, let's not go there. We're, we don't need to run a report on costs. We want to look at um, adding a cost. So I'm just going to manually inject some costs for this so we can just see what it looks like. Uh, let's put another uh, $5,000 in cost. Now, in your external systems, this would be where you would charge, be charging to uh, various uh, WBS elements based on what you're doing. So I'm going to post this. So that's, that's been posted. Now let's run our results analysis. So here I am, and I'm going to run results analysis on that one WBS. Everything looks good there. And let's go ahead and run that. Let me just expand my screen to the right. And you'll see now that if I look at my plan cost here, it's $100,000. And then you can see what my actual cost. If I look at this here, I've got 11,500 in actual cost here. And then I'm at now 11.5%. So I'm gonna save this result analysis run here. And let's just minimize this screen for just a second. And if you remember, this is at 6.5%. I'm going to go a little slower because I know some screens don't quite update as quickly as what I'm seeing. And I'm going to hit refresh here, and you'll see that this now will change to 11.5%. And although I've done some postings uh, for this in this period, you notice that it's changed the status to gray, meaning there's some revenue to be, to be posted, but it hasn't been done yet. So you can see the distinction here between recognized revenue and posted revenue. What's also nice, too, is if I just back up one here, I've got a new key performance value that I can look at that wasn't necessarily easily seen before. By the bundle. So I'm saying of all the performance obligations in this sales contract, show me the um, revenue stream of where I am. And you can see here is the recognized revenue. Here's my posted revenue. We haven't delivered anything on this million dollar contract. And on the overall contract, I'm about 3% in based on the revenue postings. But I can see which one has been posted here. If I look, I see invoice. And again, I can drill into this particular one here and see that individual detail. So as a matter of fact, let's run a posting on this so we can look at the results of what happens ultimately from the GL perspective. So posting an RIR consists of three steps. Uh, Bramasol, among other uh, fast techniques that we put in there to help move along projects as quickly as possible, has developed a fast posting screen that runs that batch for us. Um, all at once instead of individually. So now we're just going to create our, our batch posting here. And let me just give it a name, and uh, we'll just say let's let's take a look at the results of this. So right now it's doing those three steps that ordinarily would be done uh, whenever your appropriate up posting cycle is to update RIR back end to the general ledger of SAP. So as that occurs, then we'll take a look at what happens from the RIR perspective. Um, Hans, I, I know I didn't have you set on this question earlier, but uh, what have you seen as some of the impacts of this new posting functionality that folks are having to pick up as a result of putting RER in place? Well, so there's, there's first off, there's different approaches how to do that, right? So we have seen 
Um, well, I've seen in, in projects that uh, some people post this regularly, so they post this actually not just monthly, but they post it actually yeah, daily or even I think one, one instance it's like every four hours. Um, so the interesting thing about that is that uh, RER uh, works a little bit like, I'm always saying it works a little bit like fixed assets in SAP, um, in that it posts a delta. So it posts the, the difference between what it knows has been posted cumulatively for that period up to that point, and then basically compares or yeah, compares that to what should be posted based on all the information it's now at that point in time when you run the program again, um, what it has then. And then it basically uh, says, okay, so the difference is what I have to post. And um, there are some implications and some repercussions from that. Uh, uh, one thing, for instance, is that obviously you will get more documents, more postings, which depends a little bit on, on how you've set up your configuration. Um, if you're already sp uh, splitting up uh, uh, postings more, maybe you're posting by POV, maybe not. Um, so there's some impacts there. There are also some impacts, obviously, if you want to, if you need to reverse something, generally speaking, because of this marginal posting, I think it is better to go always go forward, right? Don't don't even try to go back. Um, just post going forward. Whatever has changed will be picked up then as a as a delta again. Um, and obviously, also there's there might be implications for um, yeah. I, I don't want to say the auditability because that sounds like it is it'll it wouldn't be possible to 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 reconcile. But I, I think it just adds more documents and more um, more work if you have if you have bigger sales orders bigger contracts right so yeah so maybe Thanks, yeah. And, and while you were rolling there I brought up the actual posting as a result of this one that I just ran and you can see that remember before we had collected 50,000 in revenue but we were only able to recognize based on a percentage of completion a portion of that um, so that's what the restriction is here and that's why you see that this, this sort of carbon and carve out and moving into sales revenue or leaving it in deferred depending on what's going on. Now when I go back into the RER contract and hit refresh, I can see here if I just narrow my screen up here that, uh, let me just do refresh more time here. There we go. So now I can see that everything, uh, and I'll just uh, sort it on status. I can see everything has gone green and, and my posted and recognized is now one and the same number. But if you notice that even at 38,000, I'm still not, um, at the 50,000 barrier. So, you know, in this case, we've collected money, we're hanging on to it. Um, if this is IFRS, RER would auto automatically post to the contract liability GL account that you set up. So automatically handling that, and that's, a, that's a big change, by the way, is that, that that liability contract that you have to take advantage, that you have to be aware of, um, as part of the new regulation. Okay, so let's, let's push onward, by the way, and let's take a look and let's talk about some of the other aspects that we see here. Now, I've included some screenshots in the slide deck. We're not gonna cover those right now. But um, we want to understand some of the choices for project integration. And I know we've got a few slides here, but uh, perhaps, Yasek, you can talk about the first couple, uh, and then the folks can look at these later, and if they have questions, please feel free to, to catch up with us. Yasek, uh, your idea, your concept, and what um, the concept, your thoughts on what people are seeing out there in terms of the RER results analysis integration. Thanks, Chris. So as I said before, there are two methods, and we're going for a prof uh, percent of completion method right now for this demo. Um, as you can see, one of the limitations in, that SAP has built into a system, unfortunately, is that only one accounting principle can be connected to version zero, your actual version. Um, that is a possible, or that is the limitation that we're seeing in projects, and there are different, perhaps, ways to address that. But uh, obviously, if you're doing multiple valuation, if you notice the note on the bottom of the table, if you have... Um, multiple valuations uh, activated, then, then you can do some further discrimination of the data among various principles and various versions, basically what if versions in, on your CO side. Uh, but going back again, the actuals version, simple accounting principle, and this is really aligned to the fact that uh, at the end of the day, you will be reporting on the ER side on a single principle as your leading one, where about six or six after your transition date 605 prior to that. Chris, back to you. Okay. And again, we've put some more slides. Thank you, Yasek. We've put some more in here so that you can actually see cost-based percentage of completion transferring to revenue accounting and in comparison to the revenue-based results analysis and the differences that go on from how IR is treating it. So we put some slides in here for you to reference and take a look at. Um, do feel free to ask us further questions about this, by the way. And as a result, you've seen how that operates 
in action as we go through. And what's also very nice is RER uses account determination to determine what accounts are hit. So again, you can set, uh, based on what you're doing, what particular GL accounts are used from the perspective of an RER uh, moment. So with all this in place, let's take a look at this slide one more time now. So here's, here's the future process flow with RER in place integrated to RA results analysis. So I have the concept of a standalone selling price. So when I do bundles, um, and it is something that's potentially supplied uniquely, I do need to put in um, uh, a standalone sell price. Some of you have heard of that. Uh, we saw the effect of that, by the way, because it starts to do in a carbon carve out or the multiple element allocation aspect. We also didn't uh, talk about, but I'll mention now, is that one thing that RIR really handles quite nicely is, is I'm sure all of you on some of these projects at one point or another run across what we call changes to the contract or in RIR, um, the regulation speak, contract modification. If you do that with RIR in place, what's really nice is it automatically makes all the adjustments to the prior allocation and generates a correction posting in the current period to either catch up or change how it's handling a credit situation with the perspective. So as we go through now with RIR in place, we have my results analysis key with my percent complete. It's automatically generating going to the RIR documents, uh, taking hand, handling anything like uh, invoice corrections, the revenue adjustment, contract asset, and liability, completely updating that, handling it correctly. So now that I'm not having to worry about, am I in compliance, but at the same time, my costing and my cost documents and COPA, if I'm using that, are still I still have those and I still can see that and I'm still getting that at that update there. So build invoices, get reclassified, I'm using my WBS and, and am I using the POB so I'm done, and then also the contract asset and liability perspective. Okay, so we, we had another demo in mind here and I'm just looking at the time here. I'm gonna point out some highlights of this particular aspect. I can also use RIR from a slightly different perspective and uh, we'll show you a contract and a project uh, from that perspective. So let's take a look at um, what I'm talking about from that perspective. So we can actually, uh, let's get it out of the posting view here that we've done earlier. Let's go back to our project builder and look at a particular project where we're not using results analysis. So I'm gonna look at this project here and we know some companies out there and some folks aren't using uh, PS results analysis, but they do project systems work, track, uh, activity tracking, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, my milestones are really revenue collection targets. So I've defined some, some key milestones in here um, for various phases that I am for the project, uh, engineering, uh, something like that. And then when I link that to a, a sales order, um, I get slightly different behavior. And let's take a look at that, that behavior here for, for just a moment so you can see what that looks like. So if I go back into my sales order that was linked to that contract, let's take a look at what we've got going here. So now, uh, quite simply, I've got one item in here. I'm gonna double click on that. And I'll see again, there's my account assignment. That's my linkage to that one. And let's look at the billing plan that get brought in. So what I've got here is I've got a collection and billing revenue recognition system. So it's straight revenue. There's no percentage of completion. I've just got, uh, you know, I did something on my project, come over here and I release basically the invoice to be collected. And then from the RER perspective, let's take a look at the, at the results of that particular aspect here. So as I look at that uh, particular result here, let's look at that sales contract that has that functionality um, embedded into, into it. Uh, let me just get this restarted again. And let's take a look at that contract from the perspective of RER and what it looks like. So let's just go back up and let's do my contract lookup and see how that looks and the slightly different perspective it represents from an RER perspective. So as I bring that in here, here we go, let's bring this back up again. And uh, we don't need to look at the POB structure. We'll go straight to the revenue schedule here. So if I look at this, and let's look at my revenue schedule. So very different behavior with this particular integration of sales order to revenue. So basically, whatever I invoice, and it's saying that I have $96,000 left in unscheduled revenue. And if I go back and look at that sales order, my, I should see that's the remaining uh, item to be invoiced actually. So it's a very tight, very close relationship. And we'll go to the billing plan here. And you can see there's 96,000 here that's, that's left of the, of the way we carve up the money. 
and the RAR contract is just tracking exactly to that. But what's also nice from that perspective is I see the total value of the revenue in RAR as a new KPI. I see there's two hundred and forty thousand dollars total deferred revenue here of which I've recognized 144 and I've got 96 remaining. So very interesting the way I can see my KPIs because I have a single central vetted place for uh, deferred and, and allocated revenue based on the new regulations. So that's something that's quite different and that you have available to you. Um, so these are, again, we put these documents in here as you can see that. Uh, we're looking at the, the current projects and, and the challenges uh, related to these, by the way, as we look forward on this particular element. Um, and by the way, it is a little bit of an evolving scenario. I mean, if, if we go out and, and look at the uh, questions that are put out there and some of the things that are submitted uh, for review, and for example, we just picked particularly one here, um, they're still out as of 2016. They haven't answered them, they haven't responded to them. So, so we know that a lot of people have hit the starting gate at the same time. A lot of companies are asking lots of questions and, and they're trying to catch up as best they can, but um, not all of them are getting answered because they just haven't figured it out. Variable consideration is a one that we commonly run across. In fact, uh, Bramlesell has developed a variety of solution sets to help companies meet the variable considerations aspects of the new regulations, which, which we know are a real struggle for a lot of companies out there. Um, okay, so here's the test for you, by the way. Company A, Company B, and Company C. Okay, it's not a real test in the perspective, but we wanted to give you an idea of what we're seeing out there in terms of uh, how companies operate and they challenge. And, um, and Hans and I were talking about this earlier. Hans, do you have some thoughts about, um, the, say, Company A here? Yeah, so Company A, well, so, I mean, the reality of it is, unfortunately, so there's a lot of text, right? But um, so it says basically we recognize sales for commercial airplane deliveries as each unit is completed. And you can read the details. So this is basically the input method of us estimated um, cost of sales percentage, right? That is no longer really accurate or applicable, at least in general, right? And I'll, I'll say something after I'm, I've gone through the three cases here. So, and then the second one, in this case, somebody, a customer says, um, revenue is primarily recognized using the percentage of completion method. And um, yeah, that still sounds good, but cost to cost, so the, when, you, when you look at the at source, they will tell you that cost to cost may no longer be accurate. Uh, this may, um, again, there's some, some interpretation and some, some background to that. And then C, the last case here, revenues on the long-term contracts are recognized using the central completion method. Fine, but then it says basically in the remainder of the text, and uh, we will send out the, the, um, the, the, the presentation later, so you, you will have that to, to go through. Basically, it says completed contract, um, completed contract approach, so that is no longer valid. And then also, it's actually not a good idea because you see that there's another red section in there. So revenues under the completed contract method are recognized upon substantial completion. So we cannot use multiple input methods. So maybe now the step back a little bit. Um, this may no longer be applicable. Obviously, you have you might have systems. You might have something that already does this calculation and so on. Um, you have very good reasons for that. You have a, a solid explanation for the auditors. And maybe you have even maybe you can even show to the auditors that um, the new guidelines wouldn't result in substantially different um, values. In those cases, obviously, you might still get away with it. Fine, but from the guidelines themselves, really, um, it is effectively all three of these companies have a high probability of having to restate, and you just have to have to be um, aware of that. I also think a little bit back on to the, what we talked about with the project systems. Um, RER obviously cannot do something like a percentage of completion method calculation. We don't really know where you are in your projects, right? We are only taking data from somewhere else. So this tells you also that if there are restatements, these restatements are not pure RER questions, but they are already impacting the projects the way you actually handle the projects in typically, obviously, project systems. So I think that's, a, that's probably the main aspects here, Chris. Thanks, Hans. And then well, I think one of the things that we're that we're, and we're having some technical difficulty with Hans. I think we might, I mean with uh, Yasik, we might have lost him on the audio. So one of the things that we're finding is a, is a real struggle is cost. Everybody says they've been doing costs and all this stuff, but per the new regs, there's some additional guidelines about what cost means and how you actually deal with them. So as we uh, start up a project with companies who are doing full project systems with results analysis, we're finding that their definition of cost to cost varies and that they're having to reconcile that thinking with the new regulations. In this scenario, we're going to point out that it does require um, 
some real uh, aspects of due diligence that we help to get through. We model it right away so they can see the impact of the GL, but we really uh, find this is a pretty substantial impact, especially when you get into some of these variable aspects and other things that are related to uh, projects that you're doing out there. Um, last, uh, we'll point this out, uh, by the way, too. You can drive uh, RAR from just a, you know, I'll create some materials that go on phase one, two, three, and four, and just manually drive the whole process through and do manual percentage of completion using an RAR contract. So if for some reason uh, you really want to try and get compliant by 2018, there are techniques that we can show you as some, a some procedure we can show you that can get you there. Well, you get the rest of the organization behind the concept of what cost to cost means from the new perspective of the guidelines. Um, so we'll uh, skip that demo again. It's in your slide deck. And to give you an idea of, of the new process flow challenges by system, you know, here's uh, an example we did from, from one of our customers. We had flowed things out here. And you could read, I know this is a busy slide, by the way. I didn't intend for everybody to, to memorize it by any means. It's in the deck again. But you can see here where the RAR is actually impacting the process from a flow perspective and some of the aspects that are uh, going on um, in relation uh, to that as we go through. Okay, so uh, project structure performance obligation challenges, we, we look at, you know, where the sales order maps over to performance obligations and where has the WBS come into that and how you have multiple linking elements. So we see um, aspects that are a continuing challenge for folks to look at. Is it distinct? Is it non-distinct? Um, is it part of a bundle? Should I have bundled it or am I supposed to bundle it now? Um, and you can get into some more interesting aspects to, uh, of using um, RAR. And RAR actually can do what's kind of a mini bill of materials. You can have a leading performance obligation come in, and then RAR will blow down additional performance obligations, say I, IELs include managed services, or IELs include uh, some sort of a warranty that have to be taken care of from an accounting perspective but don't show up in the sales order. And you can use RAR to blow those in so that accounting stays correct from breaking on. Um, yep. or hacking off pieces, so to speak, from the revenue. Yeah, and maybe maybe to trip in on that a little bit. So mm -hmm. the, the reality of it is that um, SAP, I, I think, it, I mean, in all fairness, I think it is, it is impossible, would have been impossible for SAP to really test out all the variations of specific project integration, also of BOM integration. Um, so in both cases, I think what you will have to do, and, and obviously we, we are um, pretty experienced in also in helping our customers understand that and work through that, uh, what you have to see is really what, what data you have on the uh, on the source system side, so be it project systems, uh, or in this case primarily project systems, um, or if it comes through SD as a as a um, as, as a bomb as a bill of materials, right? You have to see what you have as information, where that information is, so on which level do you have deliveries billing, um, where do you have the SSPs, uh, where do you have uh, any kind of other price or, or condition information? And then you have to see, well, how does, it, how, how does standard RER treat it? And the reality is that, that standard RER has a pretty, like I said, it has a specific or pretty, well, yeah, I mean, we, we have had customers that tell us it's limited. So it's, it, has a, it has a very specific footprint that it can handle out of the box. And you have to try to identify as quickly as possible um, if that works for you. And then you have to see what you can do with that. Obviously, um, SAP will improve the product, will add to the product, and um, we can see if there's if there's any visibility in SAP's development queue on that. Um, but ultimately, uh, you might also have to find workarounds, um, or you might have to do some customizations. Sometimes there's already a body or direct solution for that in the system, and then you can work on with that. So. It's just it's just to make you aware that between there's a lot of things that are in project systems and that are in SD um, that you might have to work on to make them show up the right way on the RER side. Okay. Thanks, Hans. And actually, that gets us to a, a, another aspect too, and that's the whole concept of the different transition reporting and, and what's going on. And I know you and I were talking about that earlier. Um, maybe you could share some of your thoughts about what you see customers looking to adopt as they get started uh, or have just recently got started. Yeah, so that if you have just recently got started, uh, um, I mean, what we're always discussing with customers is when they come to us and they say, okay, I want to, I want to go live January 1st, 2018, and uh, I want to do full retrospective, and then maybe sometimes they're even saying, yeah, you know, one year, like, like is the usual interpretation that it takes for, for comparison, right? Um, one year, I don't want to do one year, so I want to do two or three years, right? And um, the reality of it is, I'm telling them, and we had that discussion at, at several customers, uh, I'm always saying, okay, then step one in that, in that, in tackling that is, uh, we have to unfortunately build a time machine first. <laughs> because the reality is, 
that um, SD, the way the, the information is in there, um, SD does not easily allow you to kind of like um, go back to an earlier point in time and basically say exactly what the what the status, what the situation with that sales order is. So what were the conditions, what were the fulfillments, the billings and so on. It is not that easy. The information is in the system, SAP monitors everything, right? But it is, it is, it is, yeah, it is, it is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to actually get it and actually project back the situation like as the sales order was two years ago, one year ago. So because of that, I mean, effectively, this, the, the, the parallel that you have to run between the old and the new standard that is is really, I mean, in reality, in all honesty, it is just going forward from the point on when you can go live with RER, right? And that point is in the future, not in the past. So in other words, we're basically telling most people now that we're doing modified retrospective, and that's also the approach that most of us must take full retrospective. We have some discussions on some projects, but I, I find that uh, impractical, really. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Oz. Yeah, thanks, Ad. And we find interesting about SAP captures everything. That's right. We have an old adage that with SAP in place, you can run, but you can't hide. So for those who are looking for additional information, we well, for all of the components and references uh, that we brought in, we put in some helpful links for here uh, in here in the slide deck so that you can look at some of these uh, specific sites uh, from accounting standards, uh, from FASB, et cetera, so, um, and the IFRS group. So. Now uh, you can take a look at those specifically. So today we talk about revenue recognition accounting models as, as, a, as it goes to project-centric specific scenarios. Um, giving you a working insight about how we are uh, through the sales order is linking uh, with project systems. Um, we discuss some of the ECC project specific systems config that you need to be aware of. It's actually pretty light if you look at it. And the pros and cons are uh, something that you need to be looking at for the project cost recognition. And we know that that's a big area that we, we hit right away about. How are they collecting costs? Is it compliance with any regulations? And that's something that um, we're, although we're not um, an accounting group, we do know that uh, we do need some guidance from your um, auditing partner. And we'll, we'll say, okay, this is an area we need further guidance so we can help provide some ideas for you to, to work through with them. So on the timeline, um, Dave, I, I think you were gonna be picking up here uh, talking about our timeline and where we are. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. So this slide shows that uh, it's a reminder that time is running out. Um, we had a, a major U.S. telco go live last weekend, and they spent a couple years uh, getting to that point. Uh, so congratulations to them, but many of us don't have uh, two years going forward. Uh, and that means we need to look hard at some of the different aspects, such as parallel reporting, uh, where some companies would have liked to spend one or two quarters doing that, maybe more, uh, and the time may not be available for that. Uh, luckily, with uh, just seven months left, as I mentioned earlier, Bramsol is very focused at looking at ways to streamline uh, methodology, enhance testing, uh, provide accelerators and tools to help us uh, still be ready uh, as much as possible by January 1. Um, auditors are concerned with uh, your controls. SOC, sarbanes actually still relevant. Um, having a predictable, uh, repeatable process is important to them. Uh, so for companies that, uh, that use SAP and for which revenue recognition uh, needs to be, uh, the regulation needs to be complied with, the new uh, five-step model needs to be adhered to, uh, a systemic way to do that and automate it is important. And we can still help you make huge strides in getting there and laying the foundation so that you can work with your auditors successfully. Uh, today's session uh, focused on project systems integration aspects, uh, uh, several of which were newly brought in with the version 1.3. Uh, there's a lot of general questions about releases from SAP, so just a quick comment. Um, revenue recognition and reporting version 1.3 is available by special request. Uh, you you uh, submit a request and Bramstall can help you do that. Uh, and SAP will do a little bit of an evaluation for approval uh, to allow you to get your hands on that. The version 1.2 is the current GA version, but uh, 1.3 is there. Um, and you can request it uh, by special request. Uh, it's the fourth uh, upgrade to the original product. So the SAP has continued to move through their roadmap to improve and add functionality, such as some that you saw today. Uh, so moving on uh, to the next slide, there is uh, more information available. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there we have all of our webinars, and uh, I think we're up to 17 total now uh, related to RevRec, uh, and they cover 
some of the basics to other uh, focus areas, and you can find those on our website. And we also have a number of other collateral, such as eBooks, that give you additional details uh, and information about revenue recognition and other topics that are relevant to uh, the Office of the CFO. So with that, um, finally, uh, John Froelich, my colleague, who usually is our moderator, likes to uh, talk about this outstanding boat that everyone thought was perfect, but it had some flaws. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you don't have flaws in your work towards revenue recognition. Um, so look to us. Luckily, we do have a lot of experience, a very close relationship with SAP Development uh, and their finance line of business. Uh, we can help you with the ASC 606 IFRS 15 standards, and uh, we look forward to doing that. If you do have uh, any questions following this um, webinar, uh, please reach out to us. This will be available shortly. Um, and Chris, we do have a few questions, many of them quite detailed. We may follow up uh, uh, individually. If there are any, uh, Chris, that you wanted to address now, we can do a couple of minutes of Q&A. Uh, certainly, Dave, and, and that's one thing I've, I've noticed is one of the hallmarks of working in the, the folks that are focused on project systems is very specific questions. <laughs> so um, I was just looking through some hot. I didn't see any that would that were that would allow a quick definition. Um, I will tell you that there was one on um, what to do about dual reporting and some of the compliance from that perspective. And, and we'll give you one of the things that, that we've seen uh, working out there, and that is we've seen folks implementing um, RAR and putting in an accounting principle called 605. So you would have 606, and then you would have 605, and actually running their as-is model per 605, which is your today uh, compliance. So that then they can have, when I, when I showed you earlier that the accounting con that the contract gets created for both whatever accounting principles are present, they get both created. Um, so that allows them to easily start reporting then from a dual reporting perspective and also handle the, the, the transition and migration using a GL balance um, account approach. It makes it very clean from that perspective. So we see some folks doing that, by the way, to get to that dual reporting functionality. That was one of the questions that I saw. That was uh, one of the quicker ones that I saw. Okay, thank you. There's also another question, and, and I, I won't answer the specific, but it talks basically to uh, the, the sense of the question is, can, we, can I accomplish revenue recognition uh, compliance without using the uh, revenue accounting and reporting module within SAP. And the key thing to realize there, first of all, SAP support for older methods like SD-based RevRec is going away. And secondly, um, whether you're trying to do that within project systems or SD, the five-step model is not represented in those modules. The new revenue RAR module is what addresses the five-step model. And auditors will be looking to see that you follow that five-step model uh, for recognizing your revenue. And so you have to really consider that, that even if you think you can build or do some workarounds or other things, um, you will be putting a lot of work and effort and you still not, may not be hitting all the right steps. Uh, the final number is not the whole goal of the, rec of the standard. The standard is also following a process, uh, which is, uh, can also impact uh, your business from you know, the sales process all the way through the accounting. So with that, we will follow up uh, with you on some of the other more detailed questions that we have here. Some, as Chris mentioned, some deep project systems uh, questions, results analysis questions. Um, but we do thank all of you for joining us today, um, and uh, hope that you have are finding success in your uh, journey towards compliance with revenue recognition. Thank you very much. <laughs>